Committee of Nations, my Lord Mike says that it accords with the Committee of Nations and India has always recognized whether through Vishaka, whether th through Alcon, whether through a host of judgments that Committee of Nations principle will be respected by the India. There are, there are no conditions for marriage set out in this. Section 4, my lord. What are those Sec conditions? Section 4, neither party has a spouse living, neither party is an idiot or a lunatic. The bridegroom has completed the age of 21 years and the bride the age of 18 years at the time of marriage. But because it says under Section 11 that it marriage not to be in contravention of local laws and my marriage was valid under the local laws in texas in the usa the marriage is not in contravention so and it is in compliance also of section four so there are only two conditions one that it should be in accordance with the international but law it second it, it should be in it mentions about prohibited degrees. Where is the prohibited yes. degree? Yes, my lord. Where is it? Four, four, four yes. proviso. Yeah. Four, four, yes, yes. No, four D and four proviso. Where do we get what is prohibited degree of relationship? Two A, my lord. <clears throat> degrees of prohibited two A, my lord. Special degrees marriage. of Special prohibited marriage. relationship. So basically, and the FPA has been imported. Yes, and the proviso makes an exception of 4D, similar to SMA, my lord. Now, just 27 and then... Proviso to section 4, which says that if personal law or custom governing at least one of the parties permits of a marriage between them. That's so the personal law comes in here, right? That's if the personal law permits, and this is not special marriage. If the personal law, if one is a, let's say, of belonging to X religion, it personal law permits or does not permit, if the, if, if the personal law of the other person permits it, then the marriage is possible. No, uh, and pro no. notwithstanding that they are in a prohibited degree of relationship. So, are... so that is an exception that is, that is to personal law. So ah. that, that uh, Chief Justice, that, say, that is also subject to custom, isn't it? For right, instance. right. So what it says is where the personal law or custom yes. governs, uh, permits the marriage between the parties, then even if they were otherwise within a prohibited degree of relationship under the Special Marriage Act, that marriage would be valid. That marriage can be uh, registered. So that is up to a custom. Then we bring in custom there. Right. Personal law or custom, both. Milod section 27. So the matrimonial reliefs, if I may just point out section 18, which I won't read, are in accordance with the Special Marriage Act. And my lord, all matrimonial judgments, because they deal with the status of parties, and therefore there is great importance, are judgments in REM under the Evidence Act. So great importance to my status. No one can just brush it under the carpet and say, that look, how does it matter? You can have a live-in relationship. The live-in relationship does not answer my status. And my status as a person who is married, who has rights under marriage, has to be recognized if I have to get true equality. Milod section 27. Act not to affect validity of marriages outside it, Nothing in this act shall in any way affect the validity of a marriage solemnized in a foreign country otherwise than under this act. And my Lord 17 does a deeming provision under 17.6 that you are deemed to be married under this <coughs> act. I fail to point that out. 17.6, a marriage registered under this section shall from the date of registration be deemed to have been solemnized under this act. So, my lord, as far as the Foreign Marriage Act is concerned and the scheme, my lord, that is what I wanted to refer to. 
Now, my Lord, if your Lordship may come to the next point that I wanted to speak about, which were the rights of citizens under the Foreign Marriage Act. So, as I said, my Lord, the Foreign Marriage Act envisages marriages solemnized abroad would be recognized as long as they are within local laws of the country. They would be registered if they are in accordance with the international law and they are in accordance with the Committee of Nations. My rights as a citizen cannot be denied to me just because I'm living abroad. Look at the anomaly it creates. I am a married couple abroad. I have a family abroad. I come to India and then we become strangers in this country just because we have not interpreted or given full effect to our constitutional and fundamental rights under part three. So if same sex and gender non-conforming couple marriages are excluded, my marriage becomes invisible. I, as an Indian citizen, will have my rights trampled upon. I come here, my spouse, petition number two's in-laws are in model town in Delhi. It's so near home. And yet, they cannot travel, they cannot be recognized, they become non-family, non-citizens. This cannot be, my Lord. They cannot be non-married just because they are entering the soils of this country, which upholds fundamental rights. All right, let's go to item four of your submission. You made the... Yes. So, my Lord, item four is what... Uh, my Lord... Four is what I just referred to, the discrimination on the ground of sex, sexual orientation, gender of my partner is violative of my inherent human rights. So, my Lord, for this special reference would have to be to Article 50, discrimination on the ground of sex. So, discrimination happens on the ground of my sex, my partner's sex, my sexual orientation, my partner's sexual orientation. My Lord, even if we don't emphasize on my freedom of expression, we don't have of my right to life, my right under of equality and marriage equality, the most fundamental is that it is discrimination on the ground of sex. Same way as in many parts of the world, Women were not given right to vote only on the ground of sex. There is no distinction. There is no distinction. Sex and gender, sexual orientation, and your lordships have held that. My lord, may I just come to number five, point number five, my lord. My short. My lord, the concept of marriage and family. My lord, I uh, want to re-emphasize, which I'm sure is there, that marriage is the oldest social institution. So while man is an individual, he has autonomy, he also is a social being. COVID times have shown this demonstrably how difficult we found to be living alone and in an island. So being a social person, this is the oldest social institution and marriage is an expansive, evolutionary inclusive concept. At one time, interracial marriages were not recognized in the US. In India, intercaste marriages were not recognized. So on, we've, marriage has never been a static concept. It's a evolving concept. Mm -hmm. The moment that we have recognized that those of the LGBT plus community have rights. We have, they may be a minority, but the majority cannot decide the rights of a minority. And my Lord, when I say this, I just want to quote John Stuart Mill, which I did in the beginning of my note, if I may just show, uh, say that, uh, resound that with the quote, if all mankind minus one were of one opinion, and only one person over of the contrary opinion, mankind would be no more justified in silencing that one person than he, if he had the power, would he be justified in sil silencing mankind. 
The tendency of society is normally to impose by other means than civil penalties its own ideas, practices as a rule of conduct on those who dissent from them to fetter the development and, if possible, prevent the formation of any individuality not in harmony with its ways and compel all characters to fashion themselves upon the model of its own. May I now turn back to the note, my Lord, numbers at point six. six. So, my Lord, this <laughs> is dealing with the Committee of Nations. When I read out section 17.3, I referred to this. May I just refer to Black's Law Dictionary, my Lord? Committee, committee in the legal sense is neither a matter of absolute obligation on the one hand, nor of mere courtesy and goodwill upon the other. But it is the recognition which one nation allows within its territory to the legislative, executive, or judicial acts of another nation having due regard both to international duty and convenience and the rights of its own citizens or of persons who are under the protection of its laws. My Lord, the yoga karta, Yogya Karta principles have already been referred to. May I refer to, sorry. So, Malad, the Yogya Karta principles have been referred to in Navtej Singh Johar as well in his Nalsa. I'm only going to read para 563 of Johar, which is in my written submissions. I'll just read it out. However, the overwhelming weight of international opinion and the dramatic increase in the pace of recognition of fundamental rights for same-sex couples reflects a growing consensus towards sexual orientation equality. We feel inclined to concur with the accumulated wisdom reflected in these judgments not to determine the meaning of the guarantees contained within the Indian constitution, but to provi provide a sound and appreciable confirmation of our conclusion about these guarantees. My Lord, may I jump start to the judgments, which are my point number seven, because. So my Lord, what I am saying is constitutional committee, the fundamental rights require not just committee of nations, the word is constitutional committee. And at the risk of framing this, there has to be a constitutional committee. India cannot be lagging behind.
now we'll go to your point number seven. Yes, my lord. So, my lord, basically, what I am saying is, twelve out of the G20 countries, including the European Union, have permitted same-sex and marriages and about 34 countries okay. of the world. But virtually every democratic, progressive country of the world has recognized same-sex marriages. We cannot be behind, even if it's one person, even if it's one minority, we cannot deny them their rights. And my lord, these rights... Yes. My lord, these rights include their rights of visas, of passports, of right to live in India, because they can't be made to shunt in and out as tourists. Uh, rights of inheritance. Sorry, sorry. My Lord, yes. my, sorry, my Lord, my rights of adoption, my rights to have children, whatever means permissible under law, my rights to for insurance, my rights, every right flows actually out of this old institution, which is recognized and has been revered in our country. So we can't just uh, wipe it clean by saying that it means nothing. Now, my lord, uh, uh, your lordships may just uh, look at three, four judgments which I want to refer to, which are court-led recognition of same-sex marriages. Because the issue that is, was being raised was, should it be by the court, should it be by parliament? The constitutional duty is of these courts to uphold part three of our constitution. And therefore, that interpretation has to be placed, which will, uh, which will bring this in. My Lord, Oberfell and Fori have been read in part, and they are in the compilation. I may just take your Lordship to the Austrian judgment, which is the Constitutional Court of Austria. It's page 1080 of the PDF file, volume, volume 4 of the PDF file. First year. What little time is this? <clears throat> so, my lord, if I may take your lordship to 1080. This was a case, my lord, in Austria. They have two parallel legislations, one permitting marriages. Uh, which volume would this be? Volume four, my lord. Four in judgment. Yes. Four in? In the judgment. In the judgment compilation. Yes, we got it. One zero eight zero. Does Justice Call have it? My lord, just a minute. What are you reading? The part of the judgment or the articles? Judgment. My Lord, just the judgments, Austrian, and then one South African judgment of 1999. Okay, you read it. I'm listening. They'll take it out in the meantime. Yes. My Lord, uh, just the prefix to the judgment, the facts. Uh, according to the applicable law, legislators had separated marriage between heterosexual couples and registered partnerships between same-sex couples and had provided for different institutions for their relationships to be recognized by the state. So they were two exactly similar with all the same rights, except that they were two parallel institutions. One is a same-sex partnership, and the other is a marriage. Now, my lord, if I may take my lord to PDF page. I think it's 1090, but it's 2.4. Yes, it's 1090. Lord, having given the background, 
This distinction between two legal institutions can no longer be upheld today without discriminating against same-sex couples with regard to their sexual orientation due to the fact that, according to applicable law, legislators have separated marriage and registered partnerships as a consequence opposite sex and same-sex couples by providing for different institutions for their relationships to be recognized by the state and even if the provisions governing these institutions have essentially the same legal consequences it can be seen in a wide range of relationship arrangements okay. that although registered partnership and marriages are comparable in terms of legal relations and legal consequences, those institutions still cover relationships that are basically unequal. Then 2.5. So, Ms. Luthra, yes, there, there was a separate body of law Indeed. which permitted these civil relationships to be, you know, registered. So yes, first, there was a there was a body of law like in England. In England also there were civil partnerships from 2004. Now this is that kind of a situation where there is an existing pre-existing statutory platform. Now what is not very clear is when was this law enacted? Was it in 2009 or even earlier? Because it does refer to personal law, section 8, etc. Yes, my lord. And I, I believe it was much earlier. I'll just answer uh, your lordship. No, no, no. Please turn to page two, uh, lord, page two, para two, at page 1087 of the PDF. Para 2.1 actually says that same-sex couples can enter into a registered partnership pursuant to the Registered Partnership Act. Partnership. That's right. I just want to draw the attention of the court to the excerpt of the Federal Act on the Registered Partnership Federal Law Gazette 2009. So this law was enacted apparently in 2000 and later amended in 2015. That is para 2. Point one, yeah. That's right. That's right. Lord. Now, please, Lord. now please proceed. Grateful, my Lord. My Lord, 2.6, I'm skipping 2.5 because of paucity of time and so, my Lord, 2.6, the distinction in the law between opposite sex and same sex relationship as two different legal institutions thus violates the principle of equality, which forbids any discrimination of individual on the ground of personal characteristics such as their sexual orientation. So, even the requirement to disclose that you will come under partnerships, even though you get the same gamut of rights, was in self considered to be discriminatory. My Lord, going on on 3.2. But uh, fact, so, Ms. Yeah. Uh, Lutha, yeah. even on issues such as adoption and medically assisted procreation, there are specific legislations in uh, Austria. So, uh, you know, if you look at the bottom of page 1081, they say that recent developments in law allowed in particular joint parenthood also of same-sex couples, see in particular sections 191 and 197 of the General Civil Code, and use permitted forms of medically assisted procreation on an equal footing, namely Reproductive, Reproductive Medicine uh, Act, Federal Law Gazette, 1992 as amended. Yes, sir. In the next program. This is like two systems of law. See, this is the let us understand the background. This is a civil law country where, um, regard, I mean, keeping aside the considerations of personal law, personal uh, law emanating from different different parties' religions, we don't know how much of a, uh, plurality exists in that society. Keeping aside that, this is more of an issue of classification where they say that you cannot really treat them as separate classes. Now we are at a more, more fundamental stage. We have not legislated. So you want us to get into the second phase and say there is no classification. Yes, there is actually no classification as of now. 
And basically, what I'm asking is that even that was invidious of the equality interpretation. The fact that they had all the bundle of rights, whereas I have no right. I have no right. I want recognition of my marriage as an incident of 14, 15, 19, and 21. So the fact is, yes, we may be jump starting, but we are too late in the day. We have to come to that stage. We are already too late. We can't, India can't be lagging behind so much. Our jurisprudence has is being seen all over the world, but here we are lagging behind the others. And we cannot deny our minorities, my lord. So your lordship is right that they were already two parallel institutions. But see how far they go that even parallel institutions can't go. So in this case, what I'm saying is, I'm only asking there should be one institution. That's marriage. And I want that right. Our citizens' rights are no less. And my lord, what the court finally interpreted was, we are leaving both and let either side enter into either so that even same-sex people can get into marriage, even uh, heterosexuals can get into registered. Pa pa registered partnership. That's what the conclusion of the court was, which is so beautiful. Just see para 2.6, that's what you are really arguing. That's right, my lord. That's right. That's right. She's already arguing mm -hmm. less than any right we have. That's the mm -hmm. better point, I think. Mm -hmm. is, is this a right? Mm -hmm. Navtej guaranteed this to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my lord, Navtej mm -hmm. had actually started the footprints, and we have to now give effect to it. We cannot be left halfway. We cannot be read, left with our rights being so in In Austria, it appears that there were two different legal institutions created by law. Uh, marriage for opposite sex heterosexual couples and a registered same partnership for same sex couples. So they said that this restriction, uh, namely a registered partnership for same sex couples, this is a discriminatory. That seems to be the drift at page. The walls, if I may say that, the wall separating the two was brought down yeah. both both kinds of couple uh, both kind of relationships could go for either kind of relationship both both uh, type of couples same sex and heterosexual couples could go either for marriage or for civil relationships yes my lord yes my lord now see the result the result that the, the, the relief which the grant gives us an idea of what was really the issue Yes, the Lord. phrase of different sex in section 44 of the general civil code and the phrases of same sex couples and of same sex in the registered partnership act are therefore repealed as unconstitutional for violating the principle of equality that's right Lord. and what it's saying setting a deadline whatever the finding that earlier provisions shall not re-enter into force is based all right i think uh, thank you miss uh, Yes. So now I think we'll wrap up at this. Otherwise, we'll Lord, now I, others, as far as this judgment is concerned, this is over. May I just take your... There's a South African judgment, uh, National Association. Just briefly, maybe just one para we can see there. Milad, the South African judgment, which, which is part of my written note, and Milad, uh, what, what it basically is, uh, the position was... What's the PDF regard. page? PDF page? PDF page, this is part five, my lord. It was with the note. So, my lord, it's just next to the all note. Right, all right. This note. My lord, this is case it, was preceded by the form. It's not part of volume four, this national. No, no volume five, the, with my note, it's national. No, not. Is it it's volume five? There's no volume. It's part of the written note that was just the it's three page, yes, three yes. page one. Yes. We've seen that National Coalition for Gay and Lesbian. Yes, Lesbian. yes, yes. right, right. Is there? Yes, yes. yes. It's at page four of the note. Are you yes. referring to a particular para? Sorry, <laughs> any para number? 
Yes, uh, paras which we are relying upon and we are emphasizing are 49, 50, 51, 53b. I want to read some of them, 55, 56, 62, 67, 71, and 72. Just give us the best paragraph. Let's go to that. Yes, Lord, can I just give the background? That it was basically an interpretation of the Aliens Control Act, which was the immigration law. Okay. My Lord, I just give a little background, then I'll just read out three, four of the important paras and be done. My Lord, 25.2 of the Aliens Control Act said that it permitted foreign heterosexual spouses of permanent South African residents to apply for immigration permits, but not to foreign permanent same-sex like partners of such residents. So in that sense, it's paramateria to the petitioners herein. Just read. And the court said that it was an unfair discrimination. So if I may take my lord to your lordships to para 53b and then how it's to be read down, I will just read that. PDF page 34. PDF page 34. Para 53b. Just shorten. The subsection is, have your lordships got it? Yes. Yes. The subsection in this context, in effect states that all gay and lesbian permanent residents of the Republic who are in the same sex relationships with foreign nationals are not entitled to the benefit extended by the subsection to spouses married to foreign nationals in order to protect their family and family life. That is so stated, notwithstanding that the family and family life which gays and lesbians are capable of establishing with their foreign national same-sex partners are all significant aspects indistinguishable from those of spouses and in human terms as important to gay and lesbian same-sex partners as they are to spouses. 54, the message and impact are clear. Section 10 of the Constitution recognizes and guarantees that everyone has inherent dignity and the right to have their dignity respected and protected. The, marriage is, the message is that gays and lesbians lack the inherent humanity to have their families and family lives in such same-sex relationships respected or protected. It serves in addition to perpetuate and reinforce existing prejudices and stereotypes. The impact constitutes a crass, blunt, cruel, and serious invasion of their dignity. The discrimination based on sexual orientation is severe because no concern, let alone anything approach approaching equal concern is shown for particular sexual orientation of gays and lesbians. Then, my lords, I just think I should just go to the manner in which it has been read down, read in, page 36 of the, the appropriate remedy, 36 page 36, para 62 of the PDF. What is the appropriate remedy, my lord? It's under appropriate remedy. Lords have it? Yes. 62. As far as the declaration of invalidity is concerned, the High Court considered that three options were open to it. The first was to remedy the constitutional invalidity of 25.5 by introducing reading in words into the section in such a way that its provisions also applied to persons in same-sex life partnerships. The High Court decided against such remedy as an appropriate one, principally because it was of the view it was not possible to define with a sufficient degree or precision, the words that had to be inserted in 25.5 
in order for it to comply with the constitution. The second was, my lord, can I just take your lordships to 67? Just to proceed the time. And I'll just point out the paras that I'm emphasizing at the end of the 39 of PDF, 39 of PDF para 67. I am persuaded by Mr. Tengov's submission that as far as deference to the legislature is concerned, there is in principle no difference between a court rendering a statutory provision constitutional by removing the offending part by actual or notional severance or by reading words into a statutory provision. Uh, in both cases, the parliamentary enactment as expressed in a statutory provision is being altered by the order of a court in one case by excision and the other by addition. Lord, now para 82. PDF. 43. 43. PDF 43, para 82. An appropriate remedy in the present case must vindicate the rights of permanent same-sex life partners to establish a family unit that while retaining the characteristic features derived from its same-sex nature receives the same protection and enjoys the same concern from the law and from society generally as to marriages recognized by law. But it must vindicate at more than an abstract level. It must operate to eradicate these stereotypes, our constitutional commitment to non-discrimination and equal protection demands this. Demands this. Now, my Lord, just after reading that, the, uh, the most effective way of achieving this in the present case is by a suitable reading in if this is reasonably possible. So, my Lord, as far as this judgment is concerned, may I just re-emphasize the paras because I couldn't read all of them since I have to keep to some time limit. Paras 49 to 51, 53, to 57, 64, 66, 67, 73, 82. Actually, 86, they read in the words yes. after spouse, yes. they read the words of partner in a permanent same-sex life That's partnership. Right. That's right. Because what they, they you could get an immigration, uh, an immigration permit for a spouse. Now, spouse is interpreted to mean a same, uh, a heterosexual uh, spouse. In para 86, they say we will expand that by reading the words or partner in a permanent same sex life partnership. So, my lord, in para 97, uh, they repeat, they give the final summary, and then in 2.1 of 97, at the para 97, 98, I'm sorry, of 98, the omission from 25.5 of the Aliens Control Act, after the word spouse of the words or partner in a permanent same-sex life partnership, and my Lord, I would say LGBT, I, whatever, partnership is declared to be inconsistent with the Constitution. And then the next page, 2.2, 2.2, section 25.5 of the Aliens Control Act to be read as though the following words appear therein after the word spouse or partner in a partner, uh, in a permanent okay, same sex. Lutra, we've seen it. Thank you, Ms. Lutra. Yes, Thank you Lord. so much. My Lord, just, I, if I may just end with E.D. Windsor, who was fighting for marriage rights for same-sex couples, and who said, there's a quote at the bottom, marriage is a magic word and it is magic throughout the world. It has to do with our dignity as human beings to be who we are openly. Thank you, Ms. Pitt. Lord, I'm grateful, my Lord. Lord, I have also talked about workability in my note as well as the interpretation of the various sections yes. on in uh, point number eight and how it has to be read in 
we've already read in in harsova mm -hmm. we've read it in in no, geeta right. hare haran right, we've read yes. it in thank you thank you sir my lord i'm grateful my lord yes mr grover i'm grateful my lord thank you very much and my lord grateful to my lord justice bhatan justice call my lord for my lord i'm going to be on a slightly different track lord i want your lordship to uh, comment your lordships a slightly different argument borrowed from the us jurisprudence and that my lord is on intimate association that's one on the intimate association yeah lord i am representing two pe two intimate petitions my lord two petitions one is under the foreign marriage act my lord where the couple of indian origin one of them is citizen they got married in the us marriage is valid there and they they actually first came to india both of them are hindus and um, uh they tried to register their marriage here they could not then they went to the us back to the us where they stayed and they actually went to the embassy they filled all the forms that was not registered in fact they were not treated very well that is an issue i don't want to get into that the second petition is interfaith christian and hindu and obviously under the special marriage act i'm not going to repeat anything that ms luthra has said i'll directly go on to a, an argument which has not been invoked earlier milan and that is the argument of what is known as intimate association in the us based on the 14th amendment 19th and the first amendment and it would be embraced in article 191c you know the idea is that you can form associations from say cooperative societies to trade unions which are larger groups and intimate associations of a romantic or a marital nature and that is a fundamental right in the us considered to be a fundamental right in the us coupled with free speech because in a larger association you will actually have that group which will be protected by the the right to associate together with privacy say of their names and also to express freely that's that's the point no no so there are three issues three concepts into one but it is encapsulated in our constitution under article 191c a and obviously it will be subject to the reasonable restrictions in as far as c is concerned in 194 or 192 now no this actually arose i don't want to get into in my note which is a uh, written submissions i have given the history of it but i'll just go into couple of judgments my lord which your lordships are otherwise familiar with griswold versus connecticut my lord is one in one judgment where the lordships in the supreme court justice douglas's judgment and he's written a, in the columbia law review a paper on that this is part of your note yes article on that okay uh, it's a well known uh, columbia law review my lord yes, it is mr grover is it the second uh, written note you filed too can you the yes. first one or the second one additional one second one class additional a to l a to l a to l lord the uh, uh, pdf page 1269 volume 4 i'll just read that paragraph because this is an important paragraph if i may read that it's running into 121 pages your additional note mr grover i can't hear yes. it's running into 121 pages it can't so that's a, no i am on the original uh, volume 4 pdf 1269 I mean, there are so many volumes so, i have lost track of precedents precedents volume yes i have got them Thank yes my lord just is what is right volume 4 page 1 to 1 1 2 6 9 is the last paragraph of justice the, the the majority judgment of justice douglas lordships have it yes we deal with the right of privacy older than the bill of rights older than our political parties older than our school system marriage is a coming together for better or worse hopefully enduring and intimate to the degree of being sacred a uh, very good you get so 1 2 9 internal page 486 result uh, yes sanjay this is connecticut 126 volume 4, volume volume 4 yes 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 i got it pdf 1269 pdf 1269 the original volume 4 compilation of jay 77 177 right it's not 1269 no? at 1277 
Fine issuing is 1269. That's not uh, at 1269. I'm sorry, my lord. Sister, it's at 1269. Just one, yes, before the concurring view of Justice Goldberg. My lord is right. Oblige you, lord. Grateful to my lord, Justice so Goldberg. PDF 1277. All right. I'll just quickly read that. We deal with the right of privacy older than the Bill of Rights, older than our political parties, older than our school system. Marriage is a coming together for better or worse, hopefully enduring and intimate to the degree of being sacred. It is an association that promotes a way of life, not causes, a harmony in living, not political faiths, a bilateral loyalty, not commercial or social projects. It is an association for a noble, uh, for as noble a purpose as any involved in our prior decisions, which are all about larger associations, etc. Now, Lord, this actually has been finally given a imprimatur by the Supreme Court in a famous case versus the Roberts versus Jaisis, which is in that additional written submission, Lord. Okay. And there, my Lord. I'm not reading any large passages, but immediately, if your lordships have, if the court has page seven. Lordships have the additional note that we sent last week. And in that, there is Robert versus Jaisis, page seven. the right hand sides under on intimate association my lord so my lord is absolutely right para roman on 8, intimate... i'm sorry my lord sub para roman 8 refers to roberts versus the united states yes Please. sub para 8 yes on the main judgment my lord so Page. The personal affiliations that exemplify these considerations and therefore suggest some relevant limitations on relationships that might be entitled to this sort of constitutional protection are those that attend the creation of sustenance and family marriage. The judgments are quoted. Family relationships by their nature involve deep attachments and commitments to the necessarily few other individuals with whom one shares not only a special community of thoughts, experiences, and beliefs, but also yes. and beliefs, but also distinctively personal aspects of one's life. Among other things, therefore, they are distinguished by such attributes as relative smallness, a high degree of selectivity in decisions, to begin and maintain the affiliation and seclusion from others in critical aspects of relationship. As a general matter, only relationship of these sorts of qualities are likely to reflect the considerations that have led to an understanding of freedom of association as an intrinsic element of personal liberty. Conversely, an association lacking these qualities, such as large business enterprises, seems report from the concerns giving rise to this constitutional protection. Accordingly, the constitution undoubtedly imposes constraints on the state's power to control the selection of one's spouse that would not only apply to regulations affecting the choice of one fellow's employees. Comparison between the poles, of course, lies a broad range of human relationships that make greater or lesser claims to constitutional protection from particular incursions to the state by the state. Determining the limits of state authority over an individual's freedom to enter into particular associations, therefore, unavoidably entails a careful assessment of where that relationship's objective characteristics locate it on the spectrum from the most intimate to the most attenuated of personal attachments. We need not mark the potentially significant points on this terrain with any precision. We note only that factors that may be relevant include size, purpose, policy, selectivity, congeniality, and other characteristics that in a particular case may be pertinent. In this case, however, several features of the JCs clearly place the organization in outside the category of relations worthy of this kind of constitution. In this case, this is association where women were sought to be excluded. <laughs> immediately, next page, and I'll finish on this judgment. 
the first para on the left, an individual freedom to speak to worship. So worship also is hour 25 to petition the government for the redress of grievances could not be vigorously protected from interference by the state unless a correlative freedom to engage in a group effort towards these ends were also not guaranteed. According protection to collective effort on behalf of shared goals is especially important in preserving political and cultural diversity and in shielding dissident expression from suppression by the majority. Consequently, we have long understood the impl as implicit in the right to engage in activities protected by the First Amendment, a corresponding right to associate with others in pursuit of a wide variety of political, social, economic, educational, religious, and cultural. It's very broad, Milan. So while you can have an association, you also have protection in pursuing that. In view of the various protected activities in which the Jaisis engages, that right is plain, plainly implicated in the case. So Milan, it is now set. But I am commending your lordships to also, apart from privacy, autonomy, and dignity, which we have read into 21, to consider whether we can actually use this. And Milord, one author has said this is much more protective than uh, like a 21 uh, uh, privacy. There's only one more. What else, Mr. Grover? Milord, next point I want to make is in Oberfell. Sorry? Obers fell the judgment which actually recognized same sex marriage. I remember I, this is apropos what my Lord Justice but said. Lord, my argument is twofold. They have taken intimate association as one of the criteria. Secondly, my Lord, it was not a case that the, the, the core of the argument, the core of the case is not in holding invalid statutes which did not allow same sex marriage. It is in fact flowing from the 14th, 9th, and the First Amendment, and saying this is the right, and therefore any restrictions have to be held to be not applicable. That is it. And Milad, if your lordship will just go to Obersfeld, and ma'am, lordship, I know that the syllabus cannot be used, but the syllabus is a very precise um, summary and is by the court itself. And that is belongs to that. Mr. Grover. My lords. That's precisely the point I made, that it can be used only for the purpose of a declaration. It's, it's no legislative I'm content to that. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I understood your lordship, lordship to mean that if there was a statute that they were invalidating, then it may not be applicable to us in our so yes, lordship it was also yeah. because you had a large number of statutes which prohibited gay uh, relationships or prohibited marriage. There were several constitutions, state constitutions, which enacted prohibitions. Those were outlawed. If you yes. see the schedule to the, I think, majority yes. judgment. The, my Therefore, argument there is... was that part to it, but that was the cause. So okay. in the course of that, they said that there's a right to marriage. So in that, there are two parts. One is the declaratory part. Yes. The second is the consequential, or yeah. rather, the... the the part I appreciate I, what my lord is putting to me. I agree with my lord. Mayor. Only thing I want to add is that the, the core is not to strike down the statute. And if your lordships, I'll only point and not read on because it's lengthy. No, no, you Please can't you... say that it wasn't. It was both in order to say that there is a they, that these are in uh, unconstitutional. First, it was necessary to declare that there is a right to marry. Lord, may I commend your lordships to actually go to. The relevant portion, volume four again, two, two three, nine, nine. I'm not going to read it you know, because time is limited. But there is the syllabus, and the syllabus is an accurate summary. And we're not lordships only. I will only read only a portion of that. But I I agree with my lord. Uh, there was that was an incidental thing about invalidating statutes. That was not the core of the argument. So if your lordships have the time and will have the time to read the whole judgment, it'll become very clear. But we're not the. If your lordships will just go to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, page two four zero zero. Volume four. Volume four itself, my lord. Two three nine nine. It starts, and it's interesting what they say, my lord. The principle. PDF two four zero eight. 
two, three, <laughs> you'll uh, my lady says some error. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Okay, you're reading the physical page. We are pointing out the PDF is two four zero eight. My page is 2399, but my lady's page will be slightly different. Obershfell versus Hodges. But, yeah. so, syllabus. No. Yes, we've got that syllabus. So there are pages on the top right hand corner. Oh, I'm sorry. You've got that. That's yes. yes. page. It's okay. Let's come to uh, uh, 2401. Four principles. Four principles and traditions demonstrate the reason that marriage is fundamental under the constitution apply equal force to same-sex couples. The first premise of the court relevant precedent is that the right to personal choice regarding marriage is inherent in the concept of individual autonomy. Then your lordships will come to the second principle. That's where I am coming in in terms of intimate association. A second principle in this course jurisprudence is the right to marry is a is fundamental because it supports a two person union like any other in its importance to the committed individuals. The intimate association protected by this right was central to Griswold versus Connecticut, which held that the constitution protects the right of married couples to use contraception and was acknowledged in Turner Supra, the same sex couples have the same right as the opposite sex couples to enjoy intimate association, a right extending beyond mere freedom from laws seeking, making same sex and intimacy a criminal offense. The third basis for protecting the right to marry is that the safeguards of children and families and thus draws meaning for the related rights like childbearing. Then your lordships will come down to the bottom of that page. This does not mean, as your lordships put it, you don't have to have children. This does not mean that the right to marry is less meaningful for those who do not or cannot have children. Precedent protects the right of a married couple not to procreate so that the right to marry cannot be conditioned on the capacity or the commitment. Finally, this court cases and the nation's tradition. Your Lordship knows in the US, the traditions are very, very important. Now, not, so I'm, I'm commending your Lordship to actually use this doctrine of intimate association. That's the point, my Lord. Now, the second point I want to go into is about transgender people, my Lord. Now, my Lord, there has been a lot of confusion about norms, the gender glossary. So I'm just giving one glossary, just give it. We'll, we'll be sending it to your lordships, Lord. I'm very sorry that we didn't know that. Lord, this is just the glossary. Your lordships are now. Your lordships got it. I don't know how yes. to give it. Just send it. How will you send it? You can email it. You just email it. But here I want to, your lordships, to go to Nalsa's judgment, which is in volume one. What I want to say is, my lord, in the affidavit filed by the Union of India, unfortunately, my lord, they seem to be of the opinion and impression that in ancient India, up to the advent of the British, we did not have non heterosexual relationships. This is completely incorrect. And there are tomes and tomes of literature now available, which shows that these relationships were prevalent. They're not only prevalent, but scriptures actually record it. So I'll only refer your lordships, the court, to certain this thing, but please see Nalsa. Nalsa is in volume one and pay Paris 13 to 20, because this was argued by us in Nalsa and that's why ultimately they said okay. it is part of our tradition. Paras. Unlike in Europe. In that sense, Europe was backward. Okay. Okay. The British, we already had the notion of Tritya Prakriti. It was part of our tradition. And in terms of marriage, marriage between non heterosexual couples, transgender and transgender, transgender and cis male transgender and cis female was common. And it's actually noted in our scriptures also. 
Now, volume one, my lord. I'm coming to Ruth Vinita later. Arrest 13, my lord. Just see this. And, my lord, I'm, I'm sorry to say to, to refer to transgender in a derogatory manner is completely unacceptable. And that was the British notion, not an Indian notion. Unfortunately, my lord, right after the British, we ourselves, people like us, the middle class, upper middle class, have imbibed that prejudice. We have to get rid of it. Even today, it is actually prevalent. Lord, para 13. I mean, lord, the notion of transgender is, transgender is an English term. We had other terms, hijra, jokapa, koti, etc. We lord, where? A person would actually take on another gender physically, but in terms of you know, thinking, in terms of uh, theory, and this is in the Nasa judgment, you know, the Buddhist and the Hindus con construed this as a physical parameter, whereas Jains in their scriptures considered that as a psychological parameter. So in the 13th and the 14th century, we were much more ahead in thinking than the Europeans. Mm -hmm. To argue that we didn't have this in our country is completely incorrect. Disc for appearance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go through that. Para 14 talks of the various diverse communities of transgenders. Hejras, Eunuchs, Kotis, Aravanis, Jokapa, Shiv Shaktis. Then please see Para 15. Lord Rama in the epic Ramayana was leaving for the forest upon being banished from the kingdom for 14 years, turns around to his followers and asks all men and women to return to the city. Among his followers, the Hijras alone did not feel bound by this direction and decided to stay with him. Impressed by their devotion, Rama sanctions okay, them for the so power to read that, yes. we, we for, point. Uh, I'm not going to read it now. All I'm saying is that this is well known. It is now incorporated in a judgment. I'm not relying on literature. It's an incorporated. And we see para 17, which I was referring to. Jane texts make a detailed reference to transgenders, which mentions the concept of psychological sex. That's why Nalsa then actually incorporated these notions and said a person can actually be born as a male, and he can say from tomorrow, psychologically I'm a woman, I'll assume the woman form, and it is his or her right, autonomous right, to assume that form. It is not through the intervention of the state. That's what Nasa says. Uh, ultimately, my lord, your lordships have the Transgender Act, and the Transgender Act, Act actually under section four, confers, four to seven actually confers the right, and my lord, it gives protection to those persons who are actually certified to be transgender under that act. But you can first be a transgender, then you can assume the male or the female form through certification. Now, very importantly, my lord, what has happened is, just see this. If I am a male person, cis male, I marry a woman, cis woman, my marriage is valid according to the law. During the subsistence of the marriage, I actually assume a female gender, either through transition or otherwise. The law does not say that the marriage becomes void or voidable. In fact, it recognizes it under the Transgender Act and the Transgender Rules. That is the state of affairs under the present law. And secondly, my lord, certain states, including Kerala, and I've given that form, my lord, they are encouraging, I've got the translated, I have to translate that. They are encouraging people who are married and they're actually being financed so that they can actually. So states are recognizing these marriages. But I don't have much time. I don't want to, I'll, I'll stick to my time. You have read and understood this? I'm sorry. You read and understood this? I'm sorry, I can't. It's in Malayalam. No, no there is Malayalam and English. Translation, sir. You know, the Archive doesn't have the English one? You, no, you gave the answer. Uh, give the English one, please. We had to translate it from uh, uh, a learned advocate practicing in this court, my lord, who understands Malayalam very well.
<laughs> but there might be some considerations there because if there is an existing marriage my lords and that existing marriage has resulted in let's say children and a family mm. this this kind of if this is not preserved that will lead to perhaps that some untoward adverse consequences to members of that family your lordship is absolutely right but yes. at the same time one could also envisage a situation where the legislature would have said that no it's void or voidable because no, if you change your religion is, then, right? then, then you're yeah. looking at a legislature which doesn't take into account realities no hmm. so here here there is it's a different kind of reality which you are wanting the legislature to take care of whereas that's yes. a, another situation where the parties have you know a certain something has happened which they don't want it to result in consequences which is not to the not of the making of uh, the other parties who may be deemed innocent or whatever we don't know ordinarily suppose a person actually reassigns his or her gender in a marriage the other party would say i don't want to divorce you the legislature has not taken that view the legislature no, has that too is an assumption that too is an assumption based on with all due respect certain classes because if if you if you do that in a certain community you may lose your status you may, we don't know how things work out it's a very plural and diverse society uh, very well you know that that's a that's just, one of the issues uh, that justice call would you want to take a little break a 5 minute break or something uh, no i'm finishing 2 minutes minute i am good uh, just in two for the time i'm good i can continue if you want all right i won't take much time i'll finish in the next 5 minutes the third point i want to make my lord is that there has been argument on the other side that it is for parliament to legislate on this issue but let us look at yes let us look at the record issues have been coming up and i have given my lord uh, a document by what is known as the pink list india they have been actually observing and monitoring what is happening to lgbtqi issues in parliament and there has been no positive response for the last 5 years manoj on doing anything positive about this issue so can we expect manoj and when in obergefell this was another issue i didn't read that part they also were told by the respondent states that we we should wait for parliament and they said no we are not going to wait because the parliament has disclosed its hand earlier or rather the us congress did and the final point i want to make is about the so called elitism there are large number of people are actually running away from their homes couples same sex couples they run away from their homes and orders are available on the net and we have we have compiled about 10 orders and if you lot chips will actually look at those orders the origins of those people are from small towns they are not from calcutta delhi etc they are from very small towns they come to the capital city where the high court is and they need protection right now mr there is a case going on that we i am handling where two women have come to delhi from a rural area and that those two people have no place to stay they are poor people they don't have the money if they you have the money you can afford to hire lawyers etc but most of the people who are runaway couples same sex couples are poor people they are coming from small towns they come to the main city in the state because the high court is there so i have actually you know compiled those orders and if logic only looks at the facts it's not it's anecdotal it's not completely uh, methodological methodologically correct but it would be evident they're not elitist so therefore my lord this notion that this is elitist is incorrect lord i am sticking to my time i'm much of oh, no lord only one two things Hmm? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Lord, there is uh, in my written submissions. Just go there now. In my written submissions, I would be not doing my duty as it were if I did not read that portion. You know, there is a poem which you know, I'll commend you, Lord, for reading that in the beginning. Now, this is interesting. It's from Khalil Gibran. Then Almira spoke again and said. and what of marriage master any answer saying you were born together and together you shall be forever more you shall be together when white wings of death scatter your days i 
You shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness. And let the winds of heaven dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from the same cup. Give one another your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous. But let each one of you be alone, even as the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your hearts, but not unto each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. But I only want to say that this would have not been possible for me, were it not for Justice A.P. Shah, Justice Burridhar, and your lordships in the in the Navdi Johar judgment, and my mentors, you know, Justice Kirby and Justice Cameron. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Guru. So we'll now uh, have uh, the arguments of Ms. Jaina Kothari. Please, my lords, may it please the court. My lords, I appear in the matter of Dr. Akkai Padmashali and others versus Union of India, my lords. I have submitted a uh, supplement submission, which is a five-page note. It is uh, there in the written submission folder, but I also have now, two copies, my lords, which I'm... What would you be... Uh, what's the point that you're going my to... My lords, this is just a more summarized version. That's all for today, since I just have 20 minutes. It's called, my lords, supplementary submissions. It's a five-page... Yes, I've got it. ...which I have submitted. And if my lords, Justice Call yes. and Justice Bhatt also have it. Yes, we've got it. Grateful, my lords, grateful. Yes. My lords, I have three points to make and I'll stick to my time. My lords, our first claim, my lords, this is the second petition for transgender persons. The only other petition was by uh, Mr. K. V. Vishwanathan of Zainab Patel. My lords, our claim here is for marriage equality for all, not just same-sex marriage, my lords. We are seeking that there should be marriage for all persons irrespective of gender identity or sexual orientation. And that is our fundamental claim. And I pray, my lords, that that claim or that framing be given to this matter, my lords. My lords, the first issue, very briefly, because it has been covered, is on transgender persons' right to gender identity. I'm not going to labor it much. But my lords, some points need to be clarified. My lords, trans persons are persons whose gender does not match the sex assigned to them at birth. So therefore, they may be born as male or female and whatever sex may be assigned to them at birth, but they identify with a different gender. And therefore, under NALSA, this gender identity and the right to self-determine one's gender identity was protected by this Honorable Court. And this Honorable Court held that it is not only two genders, not just male or female, but male, female or transgender. You could identify with either any of those gender identities, even without medical reassignment. And the purpose, my lords, of granting this right to self-determine one's gender identity is to get legal recognition to a whole bunch of other rights. It could be the right to vote, it could be the right to get a driver's license, including the right to marry, which was read out. In, in, and I've written the para numbers. The right to marry of transgender persons also was specifically recognized under NALSA. My lords, in practice, what happens is that despite the recognition of one's gender identity, trans persons, my lords, are unable to exercise their full legal rights for many reasons. One, that despite NALSA, they still have to undergo medical reassignment to get their documents changed. A large number of them are not able to do that. And unless they get their medical documents changed, they don't get the access to a whole bundle of rights. In fact, technically, one could say that under the Special Marriage Act, if you come within a man or woman technically and have documents to show that, you may even be allowed to marry. But my lords, how many persons are even able to do that? And what about persons who identify not as the binary genders, but as transgender? There is no coverage of that. Yes. And my lords, there are intersex persons as well, and which are not covered at all. My lords, my second point is that is on the right to family my lords the right to family that is my second main point the right to family to be recognized under the right to life under article 21. my lords the petitioner dr akai padmashali 
She was born male. She faced so much violence at her parental home and family that she had no other option but to leave her home when she was about 14, 15 years old. She was on the streets without her family, begging and into sex work. That is, my lords, what a majority of transgender persons have no other option but to do when they are forced to leave their homes. And therefore, my lords, what does the right to family mean? My lords, the right to marry in this case, what we're asking for the Special Marriage Act to cover. The right to marry has been upheld in a whole variety of judgments of my lords. There's Shakti Vahini, uh, Shafin Jahan, and all of that has been read out. But my lords, the right to marry gives rise to a family, a kind of family which, my lords, is also a fundamental right and has to be recognized under Article 21. My lords, we can have families by blood, marriage, adoption, but marriage is one way in which we have a family and an important way. Couples can decide to marry and not have children. Couples may decide to have children, and then their family unit is either the two spouses or with their children. And my lords, what does a family do? My Lord, it goes to the core of our being. I read out, having the love, care, and support of a family is an essential ingredient for a person to live a full life. My Lord, our families give us not only find, uh, love and care, but they give us psychological support. They give us economic support. Our family is the only unit. It is the basic unit in society that we turn back to when we are in any kind of trouble. And my Lord, can... Therefore, do we not have the right to have our family recognized and the right to form our family, my lords? And that is the right I'm asking has to be recognized under Article 21. My lords, trans persons are already having their families. They are in long-term relationships. They are adopting children. And they are maintaining their families. But these families are not recognized because, my lords, marriage is not permitted. And therefore, my Lord's family is not just a heterosexual phenomenon. My Lord, the importance of the family as an integral part of one's personality has already been recognized to some extent under the right to privacy. And my Lord, if I may just, I've extracted a couple of paragraphs. And my Lord, that's in my note in para 9. May I please uh, refer to those paras, my Lord? That's para 271. Uh, it's in my note, so my Lord may not have to take the trouble of uh, referring to the uh, Putiswami judgment. Para 271, my lords held. We need also emphasize the lack of substance in the submission that privacy is the privilege for the few. Every individual in society, irrespective of social class or economic status, is entitled to the intimacy and autonomy which privacy protects. The sanctity of marriage, the liberty of procreation, the choice of a family life. And the dignity of being are matters which concern every individual, irrespective of social strata or economic well-being. The pursuit of happiness is founded about, upon autonomy and dignity. Both are essential attributes of privacy, which makes no distinction between the birthmarks of individuals. Therefore, my lords, marriage, procreation, family life choice are all separately uh, uh, referred to, my lords. Then, my lords, in para 298, it, it follows, my lords. The intersection between one's mental integrity and privacy entitles the individual to freedom of thought, the freedom to believe in what is right, and the freedom of self-determination. When these guarantees intersect with gender, they create a private space which protects all those elements which are crucial to gender identity. Specifically in the context of gender identity, my lords held, the family, marriage, Procreation and sexual orientation are all integral to the integrity of the individual. Above all, the privacy of the individual recognizes an inviolable, inviolable right to determine how freedom shall be exercised. And lastly, my lords, in the same judgment, Justice Call's uh, referral in Para 645, it is an individual's choice as to who enters his house, how he lives, and in what relationship. The privacy of the home must protect the family, marriage, procreation and sexual orientation, which are all important aspects of dignity. My lords, recently, my lords in the Deepika case, in fact, refer to unconventional families. My lords, we are dealing with unconventional families and have recognized them. And it is not just the marital tie, but what is the concept of family? And my lords uh, refer to, and I will just read out one para 26. 
The predominant understanding of the concept of family, both in the law and in society, is that it consists of a single unchanging unit with a mother and a father who remain constant over time and their children. This assumption ignores both the many circumstances which may lead to a change in one's familial structure and the fact that many families do not conform to this assumption to begin with. Familial relationships may take form of domestic, unmarried partnerships or queer relationships. Household may be a single parent household for any number of reasons, including the death of a spouse, separation or divorce. Similarly, the guardians and caretakers who traditionally occupy the roles of the mother and father of children may change with remarriage, adoption or fostering. These manifestations of love and families may not be typical, but they are as real as their traditional counterparts. Such atypical manifestations of the family unit are equally deserving not only of protection under the law, but also of the benefits available under welfare, social welfare legislation. The black letter of the law must not be relied on to disadvantage families which are different from traditional ones. So therefore, my lords, I ask, should, relation, should families where persons are trans or of a different sexual orientation, can they be denied of the right to have a family life? And my lords, interestingly, the Delhi High Court in a 2021 judgment in Lakshmi Bhavya Taneru. This was in the case of a heterosexual couple which didn't have children. They wanted to be together. And the court, in fact, for the first time held uh, that this would come under Article 21, and I would read out, my lords. We have no doubt the right to a meaningful family life which allows a person to live a fulfilling life and helps in retaining her or his physical psychological and emotional integrity would have a place in the four corners of Article 21 of the Constitution. My Lords, is a family different just because your gender identity is different? Are these not the same values that all of us want at the end of the day? And so therefore, my Lords, uh, I argue that this should fall under Article 21. And my Lords, this has been recognized in European jurisprudence and in some of the international treaties. And I've just had a reference of these for my Lords reference. My Lords, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the 1948 document, uh, while it refers to men and women because gender identity was not an issue at that time, it still recognizes under Article 16, men and women of full age without any limitation due to race, nationality or religion have the right to marry and to found a family. My Lords, that's what I want to insist on. They are entitled to equal rights to marriage during marriage and its dissolution. The ICCPR, my Lords, in uh, 66 held under Article 23.1, the family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. My Lords, we have signed up to ICCPR. The right of men and women of marriageable age to marry and to found a family shall be recognized. And my Lords, the European Union, of course, has separate fundamental rights on this. The Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU, my Lords, in Article 9 holds, all persons have the right to marry and the right to found a family. And the European Convention on Human Rights, my lords, Article 8 and 12. Article 8 states that everyone has the right to respect for his family and private life, his home and his correspondence. Article 12 states that men and women of marriageable age have the right to marry and to found a family according to national laws governing the exercise of this right. My Lords, the Yogyakarta principles, which were relied upon in the, by this Honorable Court in Nalsa, in fact, has a specific article on the right to have a family in the context of marriage. And my Lords, that is principle 24, which I have extracted. Everyone has the right to found a family, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. It reiterates what my Lords, in fact, said in Deepika. Families exist in diverse forms. No family may be subjected to discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity or of any of its members. And it in fact calls for states to ensure that laws and policies recognize the diversity of family forms and to ensure that in states that recognize same-sex marriages or registered partnerships, any entitlement, privilege, obligation or benefit available to different sex married or registered partners is equally available to same-sex married or registered partners. My Lords, there are two decisions. Uh, I will not go into those, but my Lords, O'Leary and others versus Italy, this was an issue where same-sex marriage was not recognized in Italy, and the court held that the denial of recognition of same-sex marriage 
amounts to a violation of their right to family life. Um, and my Lord, in Christine Goodwin versus UK, this was a case where in my Lord's, the European Court of Human Rights held that transgender persons do have the right to marry. And that flows from the uh, fundamental uh, article 12, which is the right to found a family. And therefore, my Lords, I would argue that we have to recognize that there is a fundamental right to family under Article 21. And in order to exercise that, the right to marry has to be granted. My Lords, finally, uh, of course, the Special Marriage Act and the manner in which it is construed presently by focusing only on men and women denies transgender persons the right to marry and have a family solely on the basis of their gender identity. That, my lords, amounts to uh, a 15 one discrimination on the basis of sex. My lords, before I go on to just my last para, I have given a proposed reading of the Special Marriage Act, uh, which replaces men or women with persons or spouses. It's for my lords' consideration. Uh, it's there. It's, in fact, on the last page of the submission. Page six, it is at the end of the submission. And my lords, so therefore my submission is that all references to male or female be referred to, be read to refer to as persons, and all references to husband or wife be referred to as spouses, to include all persons, irrespective of their gender and sexual orientation, and I have given a formulation of that. My lords, I want to just end with a reference from Love Page. My lords, ultimately, these issues of marriage rights, my lords, our argument is that it is marriage rights for all. These amount to ensuring that all of us have equal marriage rights, not just one group or the other. And my lords, this was, in fact, uh, reiterated by my lords in Naf Page. And if I can just refer to the last para, my lords, that is para 425, yes. and I have quoted it. The struggle of citizens belonging to sexual minorities is located within the larger history of the struggles against various forms of social subordination in India. The order of nature that Section 371 speaks of is not just about non-procreative sex, but is about forms of intimacy which the social order finds disturbing. This includes various forms of transgression, such as intercaste and intercommunity relationships which are sought to be curbed by society. What links LGBT individuals to couples who love across caste and community lines is the fact that both are exercising their right to love at enormous personal risk and in the process disrupting existing lines of social authority. Just thus, a reimagination of the order of nature as being not only about the prohibition of non-procreative sex, but instead about the limits imposed by structures such as gender, caste, class, religion, and community <laughs> makes the right to love not just a separate battle for LGBT individuals, but a battle for us all. I, My lords, that's what I would... I was reflecting on... Therefore, my lords, I submit that these are issues that need to be addressed, and I pray that. Thank you, Mr. Dari. Thank you, my lords. I have also submitted. I won't go into it. I've submitted uh, a, an article from the Cardozo Law Review on the right to family relating to same-sex relationships. It is there for my lords' reference. I leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Dari. Very grateful. Our brothers, brother Call, Justice, brother Butt. Uh, we have about four minutes left. Should we come back after lunch and uh, hear Miss uh, Dr. Uh, Gurswami after lunch, if that's all right with both of you? Yes, I think that's better because she is to take about the things. Have a, exactly. Yes. So, give a bit. so, Dr. Gurswami, we will hear you after lunch. Grateful, my lords. Grateful. Grateful, my lords. You brothers after lunch. Okay, thank you.